Hello, I'm Brenda Bingham with the Blue Star Mothers, and I have with me today Jolene Taylor, and she's our treasurer. And we'd like to share a few things with you today, and we'll start out with Jolene telling you about our meetings. Okay, our meetings are at 6.30, uh, the second Thursday of every month there at the mall at our store, and we pack our boxes the fourth Thursday of every month at 6.30 at the store. But this Thursday, it's a little different than tomorrow because we have a great school class coming from Hillsdale and we're packing them at 10.30. Correct. And uh, she called this morning and she's anxious to be there and I'm sure the kids are very excited. The kids love to get involved with us packing the care packages and, and then they want to know all about our troops and yeah. what they're doing and where they're at and how they like stuff and they come up with some very interesting uh questions they too. do they do so uh, i hope everyone had a very nice christmas and a happy new year most of us have been fighting some kind of illness for the last couple weeks or a month or whatever so jolene's been real sick so we hope that she's starting to feel better <laughs> got to feel better soon <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but yes we have a lot of names now at this time we have 63 names and we will be packing 63 boxes most of these are the they're with the 185th cav i believe but a lot of them is from here in enid from the national guard that's out here at the base and then there's uh, some that's from down by McAllister and some from Ringwood, uh, Stillwater. Some of them go all over the place, but they wind up at the unit here in Enid. And we have several Enid young men and women that's over there. So we are trying to uh, make sure that they get their care packages. And like Jolene said, we're packing tomorrow with the Hillsdale Christian School. And I believe they have seven children is all they have this year. Seven or eight. I can't remember what she did tell me. Yeah, but they, uh, they have made little Valentines for them. They're bringing Valentine's candy and, of course, beef jerky. These guys and these women love the beef jerky. Yeah. Um, so we try to get that as much as possible. Would you like to tell them a few things that we send? Yeah, we, uh, of course, November and December was all home baked goods, but we usually send toilet paper and, and uh, razors, toothpaste, uh, books, uh, you know, and uh, shampoos and, and you know, socks. To, yeah, they get socks and all kinds mm -hmm. of snacks that they can stick yeah. in their pocket and stuff. Mm -hmm. Any kind of snacks that we can send. Uh, we like to also get the little canned goods of, uh, you know, like the veg, not the vegetables. I mean, we'll send the vegetables if you bring them, but we like to send them like the fruit and stuff that's mm -hmm. in the little cans or the little plastic containers, applesauce, stuff like that, that they can put in their pocket and take with them if they're on a, out mission. on a mission or, or, you know, they leave early in the morning, they may not get back and the mess hall's closed. And so they try to have stuff that they can get by with and the, that uh, little single individuals of uh, peanut butter is real good. Yeah. And we always send like peanut butter and crackers and uh, the cheese crackers, stuff like that. Yeah, when they go out on their missions, they may be going from sun up to sundown and mm -hmm. sometimes they might even be stationed out there overnight. Oh know? yes, or maybe a week at a time. Mm -hmm. We don't know. They, we, they don't get back for to the, go to the mess hall. Exactly. And because it is cold, I don't know how how cool it is over there right now, but but we'll send like hot chocolate, coffee, stuff like that. So uh, And we also, <clears throat> now that it's winter, we send them beanies to put mm -hmm. underneath of their helmets and they like that because that helps keep their heads warm. Yes, yes. And each one of these uh, new boxes or the new names that we get, they also all get a star and a flag, a pocket flag. 
that we order and then we fold and we put a little saying with it. And then the stars are cut from a flag that has been retired. And we're allowed to cut the stars out and we can give them to veterans. And uh, we thought it was just veterans only, but we've been informed that now uh, we can also give them to the police, uh, the firemen, emergency responders. So if you know someone and you need to give them a flag or, or not a flag, a star, we'd be glad to share that with you. So. Yeah, some of the older veterans, when you give them these stars, it means so much mm -hmm. to them, you know. It they does. Just, uh, very appreciative. It does. And this, this week we also lost a local veteran, um, Danny Saladay. And uh, we went to the service and it was a very nice service. And I know that he's going to be missed. He was a fun, loving, caring guy. Yeah. And, and he was a cut up too. So we, we uh, wish his family the best. Yeah, we boost our mothers. We try to have a spring and fall cookout, and he was at our last one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, he used to be uh, real, real involved in the motorcycle clubs and different stuff like that. So, but we also help out with the VVA. Mm -hmm. We're we're members of the VVA. I guess are we associates? Is that what we are? Yeah, we're associates. <laughs> anyway. Um, we enjoy that. We get to keep up on some of the stuff that's going on that we wouldn't know if we didn't go to these meetings. So if you have a, a husband or a son or a daughter or someone that's uh, retired or, or could get benefits that you don't know about, we learn a lot through them. So if anyone would be interested in going to that, if you're a veteran, that's on the first Thursday, the first Thursday of every month at 6.30, no, 7. 7, but we always eat something before, so. Right, and that's down at the DAV office mm -hmm. by the train station, the old train station, or Gold Spot. But anyway, if you'd like to join us down there, we have lots of fun doing that too. And any time that you would like to help the Blue Star Mothers, we can always uh, accept your help, no matter what it is, whether it be a dollar or whether it be you want to come in and uh, help pack the care packages, or we have fundraisers coming up. We'll be doing the, the home show in April. We'll be doing the snake hunt starting in April. Oh my gosh, here we go, the snake hunts, Joe. <laughs> as long as I won't have to be around them, I'm okay, you know. <laughs> That one year, though, uh, I went up on the stage to give the 50-50 away, and I heard this rattling, and I look around, and here's all these gunny sacks plump full of these snakes, <laughs> and they're angry, and they're hot and rattling, and I'm thinking, oh, don't come out of them bags. <laughs> you got to see me to learn how to fly, you know? Uh, but. Oh, my goodness. It, it is. It's something to see them, but, and I'm, I'm as bad as, as you. I don't like snakes. It doesn't matter what type of snake it is. We have one mother that won't even go. Mm -hmm. Even we've tried to tell her, oh, you don't see him, but no, she won't go. And then you can visit the den of death, and that is really fun. So uh, not that I would like to be there. I've only been there <laughs> once, and I don't think I'll go again. But uh, anyway, those are at O'Keen at the Rattlesnake Hunt, and there'll be one at Winoka. So if any of y'all are looking for something to do in the spring, that's two of the items that's going yeah. on. So, uh, and the home show is also going to be uh, featured red, white, and blue. So it'll be all about the uh, patriotic type things. And they're supposed to be, it's supposed to be one of the biggest shows that they have. So I think they're expecting like 500 plus vendors. So come out and say hi and, you know, just, you might find something you really like. Yep, something so, you can't do without. Yeah, and one thing I forgot, the the women. We've got several women on our list this time, um, and they are needing hair ties bobby and pins. bobby pins. What else? Oh, uh, hair gel. Yeah. And uh, I just went and bought some, some of the hair 
Well, I call them hair ties. It's the little, uh, almost like a rubber band, but it's, right. you know, you know, I'm old fashioned, so I don't know the names of these things. But anyway, we, we've got some of those and we'll be getting some of the hair pins and stuff. But if you're out and about and you're shopping and you want to help out, we can't forget our women who are serving. They have needs too. Yeah. And, and we're only open on Thursdays and Fridays. Right. 10 to 5. Right. So stop in any time during those times and we'll be there. And um, oh my gosh. Um, I don't know. I I didn't do this in December, so I guess I'm just losing track of what I'm supposed to say. But <laughs> but uh, one thing I'd like to thank all of Northwest Oklahoma for for everything that y'all do, everything that you help us to complete, all of the the things that we do. We get out in public. We had the the Veterans Day parade, and that was a lot of fun. And but if it wasn't for our people in our area, in Northwest Oklahoma, we wouldn't be able to do this. And we love Enid Television. They let us come on here and let us talk, or, or maybe we just sit here and jabber. I don't know. <laughs> Smile and try to, try to make sense of what we're doing. Right. <laughs> but we we do love our veterans, and we love our soldiers and and our women who are serving. So think about them say a prayer for them and remember the ones that have fallen that's the hardest thing that anyone could ever go through and you know when that mother has to say goodbye to that child she never gets over it it never goes away so keep them in your thoughts and your prayers and think about the the people who just was lost in that rig oil or gas fire think about their families so, is there anything that you'd like to say? No, I can't think of anything else. Okay. Well, well, Enid, we love you, and the Oklahoma Blue Star Mothers, we, um, we, we need your help. We need some new moms. So if your son or daughter is out there serving, fighting for our country, stop in. Offer to join us, sign up. It's a sisterhood that you'll never regret doing, I don't think. Right. Um, once you get to know some of these people, they become part of your lives and they understand what you're going through. Or we understand. My son's home and, and uh, he's, he's fine, but you know what? He put me in this position and this position has been one of the most honorable things that I have ever done. And Jolene's son is still serving. And you know, we really, really wish him the best. And we're all proud of our sons right. and our daughters. And so. if you're ever in the store, we just ordered uh, 600 uh, flags, pocket flags. It's going to have to be <laughs> folded. So if you're ever bored, come on out on Thursday or Friday and we'll let you fold flags. <laughs> and if you'd like to see a Blue Star mom <coughs> having issues, it's when she's folding those flags. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all again. Thank you so much for everything that you do. And we hope to see you the next time. Have a good day. I'm Trisha Mitchell, Executive Director with the For Our Kids Foundation, whose mission is to provide support to children and adults with disabilities. Please look for us on Community Talk. Welcome back to Community Talk. I'm Carmen Ball, and I'm the Director at Hedges Regional Speech and Hearing Center uh, here in town. And with me is Kim Tinius, who is our audiologist. And we have lots to share today on improvements in hearing aid, hearing elf, uh, some of the uh, exciting new uh, devices that are out there that you may not realize are for hearing aids. Kim, how are you today? I'm doing good. It's been a busy day at clinic and we've been uh, getting people fit and tested because the new year has started. So um, kind of exciting because it's a good time of the year to get in there and get those those different tests to get um, done with your hearing from kids to adults. So I have a few things here to, to show you guys today. 
and we will be going over that in just a moment. Um, one thing about doing a hearing test, I recommend that you come in and you get your hearing tested and see where we are before I even think about recommending um, hearing aids or whatever uh, recommendations for your lifestyle would be. Um, most of the time I have people come in and we do the hearing test and then we go over the recommendations and they can be anywhere from a uh, hearing aid to just coming back to do your annual hearing test. They could also be learning sign language if that's something in your house that you don't want to do hearing aids, you just totally want to embrace being um, hard of hearing or deaf and just use sign language to communicate. Um, cochlear implant is another avenue that I would recommend as well. Um, these are all things that we do in our center. Uh, another thing would be hearing protection. I talk about that as well as another recommendation. If you're out there in the field and you're around loud noises and in the industry, that's one thing that I do push is hearing conservation. Um, but a lot of people come in saying, hey, I can't hear, and what can, I do, what can you do to help me with that? So we look at hearing aid choices. We mm -hmm. look at um, different styles out there for them that they would be okay with. Um, a lot of adults come in and they're like, I don't want anybody to see them. I want them to be discreet. I want to hear everything, and I don't want to um, bring, bring attention to myself. Mm -hmm. So we look at those, those different things for them. Um, my thing is I want them to have something that works for them with good speech uh, clarity and discrimination, and I want them to have something that's durable because uh, these hearing aids can take a, a hit if they, they need to be able to take a hit if they, if they are dropped or if they are uh, picked up by a dog and we try to at least get it out of the dog's uh, mouths <laughs> like, like we want yeah. to, but sometimes the dogs get them or the cats. Uh, and then also we want to look at something where the cost is efficient for that family as well because hearing aids, they are costly, but that's an investment that you make for your family and for your life and for you to get engaged back into society is what parents and uh, patients tell me. Um, hearing aids now really have came a long way from where they were mm -hmm. uh, 10 years ago. Shoot, they've, they've gone to where we can stream everything now to the ears from your phone, um, to your or to your uh, tablets, your iPads, iPods. Uh, I have one lady who brought, got the hearing aids and she loves the fact that she can use them at the gym and be walking on a treadmill with her hearing aids on and hearing her friends talk to her while she's listening to her music too. So it's kind of cool because you're, you're thinking, oh, well, how is a person that has hearing loss going to hear through earbuds or um, just hear music? And so they need to hear the beat so they can get out there and, and work out and do their thing. So, I had that one lady who said that to me. She goes, I'm, I'm able to hear my music that I want to hear. So it's pretty cool. Um, the one thing I'll show you, I'm going to grab this table and I'm just going to pivot it right in front of me. Okay, so I got a few things here. I got my phone, but the phone's just there for uh, to make an understanding between the different things I have here. Um, these are a traditional pair of hearing aids that I have. They go behind the ear, and those hearing aids um, can amplify uh, sound through the ears and into the ear, uh, hearing organ and you, you're able to hear. Um, so that's what these are for. They're very simple. They go into the ear canal with this little piece that has a little dome looking uh, ear piece on there. It goes into the ear canal. But this is what the hearing aids are. They've really came a long way from where they were being these big monster hearing aids that you heard squealing in the back of the church. Yeah. Um, they've not a lot of feedback anymore like there used, there used to be. Um, this these hearing aids actually are ones of the new rechargeable hearing aids. They have batteries on them that fit into this little, if I can put this on here right, they just drop right into there. And one thing I like about them is I can turn that upside down, kind of like the Dairy Queen Blizzard. Uh, anyways, they don't pop out, and I like that because um, the batteries are rechargeable. And those batteries are pretty cool because they're rechargeable. They go fit into here like a traditional battery would. You put the batteries in and you just put them in there overnight and it'll charge for you. And um, when they're fully charged, they'll last you 24 hours. So very nice if you have dexterity issues with those fingers, um, arthritis. Um, I have a few patients that are diabetic mm -hmm. and they, their fingers just don't work like they used to. Visual things is a big deal because those batteries are about teeny tiny and it's hard to see those things because your vision is not as good as it used to be when we were 18. Um, so and it would also save money because you don't have to absolutely. buy batteries every week or absolutely. so. Absolutely. Um, you won't have to be worrying about uh, changing those batteries because all you have to do is just pop them on the charge at night and then go. But the good thing about this hearing aid is if for some reason electricity goes out, you can't charge it because of the uh, electricity issue that we all, you know, face when we do have outages, you can put a traditional re disposable battery in there and it'll work just like the 
the rechargeable wood. So a um, lot of flexibility on that battery. My elderly love this, um, th this feature just because of that. Some of my parents really like it as well because then they don't have to worry about their little ones running around having batteries and worrying mm -hmm. if they're gonna swallow them or if the dog's gonna get it or whatever. Yeah. We can put a lock on that yeah. battery door and it, it won't open. So. And you made a comment about parents of children in hearing aids. Yes. Um, it's, <coughs> it's been kind of surprising to me out at Hedges is you have about a third of your clients are what you think of as hearing aid clients mm -hmm. being over 61, but then a good almost third of your patients are under 21. Yeah. So we have a lot of of kids in hearing we aids do. with we hearing do. issues. Um, from anywhere from being born uh, born with hearing loss to, I have a little boy who just came in, I fed him today. Uh, he has hearing loss due to cancer. He, he did chemo, chemotherapy and the radiation, all that damaged his ears. So now he's in a, he has a permanent hearing loss from that. So we put him in a hearing aid. Some of those kids with the mild hearing losses that have passed all the way through to about kindergarten, they're getting found now, and so we're discovering that they do have a hearing loss, so we're putting hearing aids on those kids. And so a lot of our kids are coming through, we're getting them fit, and as a matter of fact, we have a couple of newborns that were, actually they're not newborns anymore, uh, I fit them in uh, July, now we're up to whatever, what is six months almost. Anyways, we're fitting those little ones in hearing aids as well and they're getting fit and we put those kids in those sound booths and moms are crying because they're like seeing their daughters facing the sound that they're, they hadn't heard. So with the hearing aids on. So it's amazing to see that uh, where the hearing aids are benefiting those children. So yeah, and my kids, uh, I got into the, the business of audiology because of my son. So I am big on uh, counseling my parents because I know I've been on the other side of the table where you know I know what they're going through so when we're down there with the box of t tissues and we're going through them and we we understand and so I get a lot of uh, parents coming in saying I'm glad that you're here because now I can have somebody to bounce mm -hmm. off of so but the good things uh, I will say adding all to that is we we have a lot of features where with the hearing aids um, a kid or an adult has a hard time hearing on the phone. Um, phones are not easy to use. People think, okay, I have a phone here, I'm just gonna put it up to my ear and I'm gonna talk. Well, you gotta find the sweet spot on your phone. So that is one thing I've kind of counseled my patients on. Your hearing through your ear isn't the same as your hearing, your hearing aid, with your hearing aid on. Your hearing aid's up on your ear, you need to put that, that phone up on top of your hearing aid so it's picking up the sound so you can hear better. Um, so we have other things now that we can stream um, through the cell phone through these hearing aids. So you have this little clip here and it's a little device. It fits right on the, the collar and you put that on and I'll pull that down a little bit. Uh, it'll sync your cell phone right into your um, hearing aids. So with this little device, you just push the button and it and it will click and it'll pair with these hearing aids and it'll go right in there. So if I want to play a game or if I want to uh, watch YouTube, I've caught a few kids at the high school doing that with hearing aids on. Um, but if you want to, you know, look for whatever and, and, and listen to that without everybody in the room hearing you, it goes right into your hearing aid. Um, and then I have this one right here, which if Carmen were to wear this, I, she could be speaking to me and her voice would go right into my hearing aids as well. So it's kind of a neat thing because um, doctor's offices are not easy to communicate in because all the noise and the doctor's talking and you want to know what's being mm -hmm. said. I think more of my patients who are older are using this just for that very fact. I got to hear what my doctor's telling me about my health. So right. I uh, like this little, and we have used this in schools as well where the teacher's voice goes right into the kid's hearing aids and they're not missing anything either. Um, I'll, I'll mention cochlear implants has the same feature as well. Um, so cochlear implant patients who have a huge hearing loss, we had spoken on that here last time we were here. Mm -hmm. So with cochlear implants, it's for someone who has a, a typically a severe to profound hearing loss and they're in a device that's implanted behind the ear. And this device also fits just like this and it'll pair them with their cell phone, their computers, anything with Bluetooth. Bluetooth is amazing. So, and this little thing is uh, for the TV. So you can put this right next to your TV, push a button, and it'll connect you to your hearing aids. So, kind of a neat thing that's out there, so that you don't have to crank up the TV. Mm -hmm. For everybody in the room is like, oh my gosh, turn the TV down. Instead, they can comfortably listen through to it through their hearing aids and probably tell you, hey, you need to turn your hearing aid turn down the TV. But, you know, that's what I'm hearing from my patients. I don't know that part, but all the wonderful gadgets to make hearing 
just easier. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah very convenient, very convenient. Uh, probably the first thing we need to encourage people to do for the year is just consider, just like you would an eye test, consider a hearing test. Um, I just had one this month, and Kim doesn't poke and prod too bad. No, not at all. Not at all. Uh, it was, you know, it was fun. Um, it's not a problem. Come in and do it. And um, it's just really important to get a baseline if you haven't had one done before, or if you're looking at, or too many people have told you, you need to go get your hearing checked, right. then it's perfect time to do it. Right, right, because to getting it checked is important because uh, I, I've had patients come in and we have found underlying medical conditions just through that simple hearing test that they went on to get it corrected and their mm -hmm. hearing was much better and also the, the underlying condition was gone after that. Right. So. Um, Hedges is a nonprofit United Way agency, uh, so we love to help people. We love to talk to people about about hearing. There's no one more of a passionate advocate about hearing conservation, saving what you've got, protecting it, and then if you do start losing your hearing or f for another reason mm -hmm. never had it, then uh, Kim is great about talking with real options for you and getting on down the road so you can hear and get on with your life because um, that's really what it's all about. So um, any last words? Well, I, I have to plug this. Um, if you don't know me, my son has cochlear implant. And so I got into this business because of cochlear implants. I know audiology is housed and that's where I, my, my love and passion is at. So that being said, brought it to Enid and we are going to have an open house for um, cochlear implant and options out there when hearing aids are not enough. Um, it'll be April 12th at 6 o'clock out at Hedges and that's at 2615 East Randolph over there by the colleges. Um, and so we're going to have people come in. Uh, we have our surgeon coming in, Dr. Wayne Berry Hill from Oklahoma City. He is the surgeon I've been using since I've been out of residency and so uh, he's going to come in. We're also going to have Cochlear Americas come in from uh, Denver. They're the ones that come in and do our cochlear implants. Uh, that's the group I use. There are three manufacturers but they're the ones that I choose because that's what's on my kid's head. Um, and so I, I have that coming up. So if you are interested, call out to Hedges and we can get you just RSVP'd on that and give you more information because that's going to be an awesome time to learn more about cochlear implants. Yeah. And if you're if you're interested yourself, bring someone else that's uh, that you think might be interested, or that you want a second opinion to bounce things off of for that uh, for that event. Yes, and we will have um, a caption relay there so that if you can't hear, which that makes sense, you're coming in because you can't hear, um, they'll have captions up there so you can read what's being said. Yeah. So there are many exciting things happening in hearing, and we try out at Hedges and Kim Tenius. Uh, our audiologist tries really hard to make things as easy as you can to hear back again and improve the quality of your life. So from Hedges, we would like to thank you for listening and please call out, make an appointment if you have any questions and sign up RSVP for the, the uh, open house for cochlear information. And our phone number out there is, I'm sure on the screen, it's 580-234-3734. Thank you much. Leslie Newell with Junior Welfare League. Come shop at Return Engagement at 123 North Grand in downtown Enid and watch for us on Community Talk. So Ken, go ahead and tell us a, a little bit about the organization and yourself. I'm Ken Larcher. I'm the leader of the Lady Liberty Sponsorship Group. I'm a combat veteran and I've been in aviation for about 40 years. As far as the uh, aircraft goes, she sits in Woodring Airport here in Enid, and we perform uh, air show uh, performances, and we also uh, have people come out and visit the aircraft um, to see an aircraft that actually flew in combat. So you so said the aircraft flew in combat. Where did it fly? It's a three-war veteran. Uh, the A-26 saw combat in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. 
and ours particularly flew in Europe in, during World War II. It was originally uh, assigned to Great Dunmo, England, and it flew from England to Germany, and then it was assigned in France, and we've actually lost contact with where it was after it went to France. Uh, and then it came back to the United States, and it was uh, used as a target puller first, and then they did some radar research with it, and then it went into uh, storage, and for a while it was sitting in storage, and the Air Force decided to sell it off, and so it went through a couple of owners before it was donated to the CAF, or the Commemorative Air Force. So this aircraft actually flew in World War II? Oh, absolutely. It, uh, in fact, it still has a couple of places where we think uh, that it was repaired after it took bullet damage. Okay. So what, what exactly is the Lady Liberty? The Lady Liberty is an A-26 Douglas-built attack bomber. It's a twin-engine airplane capable of carrying about 4,000 pounds of bombs and uh, another 4,000 pounds on external stores. It can also carry 14 forward-firing 50 caliber machine guns. It was the first bomber that had what is called a laminar flow wing, and so it could go as fast as the P-51s, which was the big problem with the B-17s and the B-25s, because they were much slower. So you've got a World War II airplane right here, local. Where do you actually keep it? Well, it's kept at the Enid Woodring Airport at Hangar 11, which is directly across the, uh, across the street from the Vietnam Wall of Honor. Outstanding. So the, the team, is all local people that uh, are working? Well, when you say local, they're all Oklahoma. Uh, every one of them is Oklahoma people. And in fact, it's, it, it is an, air, an aircraft for Oklahoma. The idea is that some of the people are in Oklahoma City, some of them are 80 miles um, away in Tulsa. We also have several people in Enid that are crew members. So you mentioned that uh, it's part of the Commemorative Air Force. What exactly is that? The Commemorative Air Force is a nonprofit organization. We are dedicated to the acquisition, restoration, and preservation of World War II combat aircraft. Our main purpose is to fly these aircraft and bring them to the public. And their mission basically is to bring forth the story of what happened during the Second World War and the sacrifice it provided for the veterans and those that went before us. Mm -hmm. uh, the Commemorative Air Force is broken down into um, about 80 units. Each unit has one or more aircraft that they either restore or fly or maintain, or all of the above, and take them basically to air shows to tell the story of air power in the Second World War. So Ken, who exactly is the Lady Liberty Sponsorship Group? The Lady Liberty Sponsorship Group is a great bunch of guys that come out and are dedicated to the making of this aircraft, this warbird fly. We do that by going to air shows, by having efforts of the community come out and help us, and by financial gifts. Also, this is truly an Oklahoma effort. The idea is to keep this warbird flying and maintain the education of all those who have gone before us. So this aircraft actually flies, is what you're telling us? Oh yes, we, we fly this aircraft. We hope to fly it about 70 hours a month. We usually come off with about 50. There's lots of maintenance that has to be done, and so 50 hours a year is basically what we shoot for.
So this organization out there, this is all volunteers? It's all volunteers. Uh, there's nobody paid. Um, there's mechanics and pilots and air crew members and all that sort of thing. But uh, it's a great team at Lady Liberty, and they, they give their hearts totally to this, uh, to this project. So how does somebody become a member of this unit? Well, the first thing about coming out and, and becoming part of the unit is you have to come out. Um, basically, it's a family, it's a unit, so you come in and you learn them and they learn you. And then what happens is you kind of get assimilated into the unit, you get accepted into the unit, and then you pick what kind of a job you want to do. Yeah. Whatever your expertise is or whatever your desire is, um, then you go off on that. And we've got training that takes care of that sort of thing. What type of training do you do? Well, the training we do is, is pretty all-encompassing in the aviation field. Uh, we train our own pilots. Uh, our own mechanics, is, uh, they have a training program, and, and there's an annual school that we have, but for the mechanics and the pilots, basically there's training all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, safety, aviation safety and training go together hand in hand, and you cannot have aviation safety without having training, and it's a continual thing. And basically, except for the pilots, it's, it's pretty much free. Uh, it's less than $50 a year for the mechanics, the helpers, the ground support people and all that. Can anybody volunteer or is there? Anybody can volunteer. Anybody can volunteer and come in. It's a volunteer organization. They can come as they please and they cannot come as they please, whatever. But yes, anybody is welcome. So if, if for these volunteers, what type of positions do you actually need out there? Well, we need all kinds of positions. Um, some of the positions that are open right now, and we really need help, are basically helpers for the vehicle and aircraft mechanics, administrative help, air show assistants, that's people that go out with us to the air shows and, and, and do the things that we have to do to, to give the show. Um, we need photographers that come out with us and, and do sort of like what we're doing here. We need... Uh, drivers once in a while to go out and take equipment here, there, then. Every once in a while we'll need an engineer, somebody that needs, that, that can design or build something. But the air crew, it's the crew chiefs, the flight engineers, the pilots and the mechanics and our ground support people. Uh, they're absolutely great guys, but we always need more help. Well, it sounds like it's a full team that you have. Oh, it's an absolute team. It's more like a family than a team. You'll see brothers out there, they'll get into a, a little spat and they'll be fine an hour later. But it, it is, it's, it's a group of wonderful people. Okay, well take a look at that. So obviously it's gonna cost a fair bit to be able to keep something like this in the air. So how do we get the funding for this? Well, funding is difficult. And uh, some of the things we do um, is that we have air show uh, appearances that the air show producers, the Air Force at an Air Force base or, or a private airport, when they have an air show, they have funding to, to help us get there and, and operate. We get private donors, uh, people that just love the aircraft and, and want to help keep it flying. Uh, we have aircraft sponsors, and those people are intimately involved with the aircraft and the operations thereof, and, and they have a sponsorship that they actually get plaques and, and accolades and that sort of thing about being a sponsor because they are really the bread and butter of, of our assistance. We get corporate sponsors if we can find them and we get uh, organizational sponsorships like the American Legion or the DAV or that sort of thing. So we're really strongly supported by sponsors in the local community. Yes, their sponsorships are the lifeblood of this aircraft. Um, the air show appearances actually give us some funding, but not enough to keep the aircraft, the insurance, and the fuel and everything. They just, there just isn't enough time or personnel to have just air shows do it. It can't be done. We have private donors. Uh, we have uh, donations on our website for online donations. Aircraft sponsors who are really the life's blood of our own organization, the sponsors, uh, provide funds and assistance to our organization far beyond just the money that they, they provide. Uh, corporate sponsors, if we can find them, and organizational sponsors like the DAV or the American Legion 
the Kiwanis Club or that any of the organizations of the community. The community is the thing that we really want to approach and have them be part of our organization. So it sounds like this is an opportunity for the community to get involved in keeping this World War II aircraft uh, in the air. How would they get involved? Yes, it is an opportunity, and it's a great opportunity to actually be involved with, with something of history and something that's actually unique to, to the entire community and to most of Oklahoma. So how do they get in touch with you? Lady Liberty, first of all, is at the Enid Woodring Airport. Any Saturday, except those Saturdays that we're actually gone to an air show, you can come out on Saturday about 9 in the morning and we'll all be there and welcome you in. Secondly, our website. You can get our website at any time at www.a26ladyliberty.com. And finally, call 405-919-6784, and somebody will always be there to talk with you. Terrific. So you mentioned you do air shows. How often do you fly air shows? Well, we try to fly air shows 12 times a year. Sometimes it's 10, sometimes it's 15. We, we, we need to, to try to get 12 air shows a year. That being said, we need air crew. Um, we're, we're short on air crew, and if you're a pilot or if you're a crew chief of, of, of any sort, we need to talk to you. This is an Oklahoma effort, Oklahoma through and through. We look forward to welcoming members of the community to come out and join us and join the team. Terrific. Well, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Hi, I'm Matt Lohman, CEO of Hope Outreach Ministries, where our mission statement is sharing the love of Jesus Christ to the felt needs of our community for the purpose of empowering people towards responsible living where we have our parenting ministry, our homeless ministry, our community care ministry, our transitional housing ministry, and our thrift store ministry, which helps everyone in our community who is in need. Please look for us on Community Talk. We're looking forward to telling you more about each of those ministries.